Welcome to the PBC 2020 NBA Draft Remote Film Room. My name is John Chepkevich, Director of Scouting for the PBC, and joining me today is a 2020 PBC honoree and 2020 NBA Draft early entrant from Delaware, Nate Darling. What's going on, Nate? Hey, thanks for having me, John. Yeah, of course, man. Uh, how are you holding up in Canada up there? I, I'm sure it's... Uh, you know, not as crazy as it is for us right now with COVID, but I'm sure you've had your fair share of uh, challenges in this elongated pre-draft process and trying to navigate that and figure out, you know, how best to make use of the time, right? Yeah, no, it's it's been a struggle, but, you know, it's just good to be back with my family and uh, good to be here um, working out and training and just, and just getting ready for the next step. Yeah, that's great, man. And I, I think I can speak for most people that, you know, when you ended up ultimately deciding to keep your name in uh, the draft, I'm guessing that a lot of people weren't anticipating that, right? Like it wasn't a foregone conclusion. People didn't really know on the outside of looking in that that was kind of your intent, right? But now that you've done it, I think it does sort of make sense, right? Like you, you transferred and you just came out and absolutely showed how much you improved since uh, two seasons prior after your redshirt year. And you know, I don't think there was really that much left for you to prove at this level, right? So uh, what kind of went into your decision to ultimately keep your name in as an early entrant? Uh, kind of like what you said, you know, I, I think I proved what I could do. Um, I showed what I what I needed to do, honestly, and I was ready to make the next step to, to be a professional. Um, this felt right. You know, I was getting good feedback and uh, I was just I was just ready to make the next step, honestly. So. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, once teams figured out that you were for real about staying in and not just testing the waters to test the waters, I'm sure they've really dug in and been doing their due diligence, catching up on film. And when I did the same, it just really popped off the screen to me, the extent with which you were probably one of, if not the best shooters in this draft class. Uh, before we dive into all the film here, do you want to maybe speak to, you know, I guess how you became that dynamic of a sharpshooter. Uh, it's just been like a, a constant process through through years of working. You know, I started as as a young kid, and I've always had a a knack for shooting. Um, and it's just time in the gym, man. I mean, if you ask any coaches or any people that have been around me, I just kind of you know I live in the gym by myself and just shoot on the gun twenty four seven. So it's just it's just been a long process of having the confidence to shoot the shots I do, and just you know become who the type of shooter that I've become so yeah I mean it's just reps right and it seems yeah. like you've been doing that and you've been adding more and more shooting versatility to your repertoire and that's you know shooting off the dribble is one of the premier skills at the next level and you definitely can do that um so let's just dive right into the tape here I mean we're going to go through a couple minutes of tape just touching on exactly that first and your shooting versatility your range off the dribble off movement everything like that sound good Sounds good. All right. So we're going to start here in a matchup against Hofstra. I believe this is in your uh, – was this in a conference tournament here? Yeah, the, the conference uh, semifinals. All right. Cool. So I think as we see this thing developing here, you catch this ball the whole way out here, and immediately they have two guys stunting at you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you want to maybe just talk me through sort of what you're seeing here and like what ultimately leads to you yanking this from deep. Yeah, I mean, Hofstra plays a really good matchup zone, and they're yep. all over the place, and they're usually like one guy won't leave me until the next guy is there, and there's a, a little miscommunication between them where one guy kind of left a little early and Bowie didn't come up with his hands up, and I saw just an opportunity where I had a good clean look at the rim, like right there. Right, so he stumped up at you, is relying on Bowie to come on over and with his hand for it, and then you just in that split second recognize it and pull it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, I think that'll be kind of a recurring theme that we see throughout these clips is that you know you oftentimes only have this super minor window to get these shots off, right? You have to have a really quick trigger release, and you know teams are obviously going to be trying to run you off the line. Yeah time so you have to be able to create that space and get it off quickly and I think you do an excellent job of that so we'll see this clip here you run off a little down screen to start little side pick and roll action is initiating here so what are you I guess as a you know a bona fide shot creator off the bounce like when you're navigating a pick and roll from the wing over here with an empty corner 
what exactly are you anticipating from the defense and what are you seeing here? Uh, usually like if it's empty, I'll, I'll probably get like, you know, pressed a little bit, like the big man might come up and, and try to double right there, but he did, he kind of went back and got slipped a little bit. And so I just pulled back to just through the legs, see my options. And when I kind of similar to the other ones, I had him on his heels and his hands were down instead of keeping it up. And I just, I decided to pull it. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, that's from well beyond NBA range and, you know, super fluid. You got the little, little leg kick in there, but it's all, it's all like natural and fluid, right? Like you go from just surveying the situation to jacking it up within a split second there. Uh, See this one from the same game as well. You're out on the wing here in the corner. So we'll run this one back because I think this highlights some of your off ball movement and relocation skill, right? Mm -hmm. So you start here kind of running from the corner down into the paint, right? And then you just come right back out and catch this seamless uh, off movement, pull up for three. Do you think that, uh, you know, you've gotten better at, throughout your years at sort of being able to work on your footwork and positioning to make it so that when you are sprinting out to the corner like this, that it's, you know, no wasted movement, just catching it on the hop and pulling up. Yeah. That's, that's been a big, um, like improvement area for me. I think I've always had like really good footwork and that's one thing I've always been keen on having, being able to shoot like every single way, you know, not just hopping into it, being able to one, two it at both sides or depending on the situation, you know, I think, some guys have like a set way to shoot every time and, yeah. and just, just being able to, to know, to know you can pull out any footwork. So like you said, I, I have a split second to get my shot off. If, if I did a different type of footwork, I might've been slower. So uh, yeah. yeah, so I, I, I've, I've been working that out on that a ton. Yeah. And I mean, you know, just that versatility is, is, you know, probably the most dynamic aspect of your game. There's the footwork, there's the, you know, the upper body mechanics as well. And you'll see here, this one particularly highlights your gravity, right? So you catch this thing. You're the whole way out on your Blue Hen logo out here. And you're enough of a threat as a sh- shooter, even from that much of range, that you know teams have to run you off the line. So this guy comes sprinting out for a wild closeout, one quick dribble, mm-hmm. easy pull up. Uh, have you, did you kind of notice that throughout, you know, once you got to Delaware, that teams became hypersensitive to you even from like damn near 30 feet away and uh, had to like quick pump and goes and get some easy looks yeah I mean definitely in the first couple games of of the year I hit some some pretty deep threes and and from I mean at my old school you know it was pretty much people's job was just to run me off the line but I kind of added that once they run me off the line you know I could do something with it after that and, and, and still create my shot so um yeah, just even looking at the rim a little bit can get, get guys on their toes. Yeah, definitely. It's one thing to just be a great shooter, but it's another to have counters when teams are running you off the line, and you definitely have those and can definitely pull up off the bounce, as we see again here with another little side pick and roll action. And we'll move over to William and Mary here. Uh, this one, I think this to me kind of is your signature move. So we'll run this one back, but I feel like oftentimes you get this out on the wing you start going to your right and you drag it back with that right to left crossover mm. straight into a seamless pull up. Do you feel like that's one of your sort of go to ways for creating space, not to give away your trade secrets? <laughs> I feel like you yeah, you can call it, I guess, right a go to go-to move. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a quick little hang, get him on his toes a little bit, and then see how he's reading. And this time he went into the screen a little bit, like, and I just pulled it back and had enough space where I can, I, I knew I could get a, a good clean look off. Yeah, definitely. Like you're just denying the ball screen sort of because mm-hmm. he's over anticipating that he knows, like if you do go over that, that he needs the fight to get over, he can't mm-hmm. shoot under the screen. So you get him lean in that way and then just have, you know, the handle and the, you know, quick pull up to make that happen. And as I was going through all your clips, that was one of the sort of recurring moves that I saw, right? Just yeah. the right left cross sometimes with a step back mixed in, you know, just, you know, that's, that's probably your signature move and there's not really a ton you can do about it if you execute it perfectly. Right. Yeah, exactly. This one here. I mean, we saw in the previous one that, you know, you gave a little pump fake from the, uh, from the logo, this one, your heel is on the William and Mary logo. 
pulling up the whole way from deep. And I think, you know, this defender makes a, uh, probably one of the worst mistakes someone can make against you in going under screens, right? Yeah, well, that's, as soon as I see someone go under, like, my automatic is, okay, I got to shoot this unless he does a really good job of getting under. But, like, yeah, you know, so it doesn't really – Having that range, I guess, gives me the freedom to be able to to, to shoot those and, and make guys go over and then give the advantage to somewhere else you're going to make a play off the ball screen or whatever. But, yeah, he did make a, a bad choice, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's never the move. And he even actually, like, to his credit, even though he's under, he kind of at least gets a hand up there, but it doesn't matter. Like, it's, yeah. it's over at that point. That's too easy for you. So we'll move on. This one is, uh, let's see believe another here we go here's your signature again right we got the this time it's not against the ball screen but uh i think you have a little bit more into this one too you got like a little rip move action going on in there as well mm -hmm. uh do you think that like as a handler in creating space in tight quarters like this that you've gotten a little more just like uh you know assertive with it and like able to just make that one quick move and pull up uh throughout your career yeah, definitely. I think uh, once you make the game a, a little more simpler and just quick and precise, um, you know, it comes a lot easier to you. And and in those movements, you know, just get him, get him on his heels, make space, step back, and, and knock it down. So it's just just going to my my go to moves basically, not and not overcomplicating the game. Definitely, and you know, it's all very fluid. Again, the little rip gets him leaning over to his left start going this way and then the step back. I mean, I, you know, we talked about the crossover before, but you couple it with that step back. And I think that'll be key against uh, guys at the professional level as well, to be able to like, you know, launch yourself back and create enough space against even longer, more athletic defenders that you're going to see, you know, having that in your bag is definitely going to be key for being able to continue to get your shot off at this rate. Right. Yeah, for sure. I think we'll see one more here. There it is again. Boom. Right to left cross with the step back money again so this one here i mean I, this just happens so quick I, and there's there's four guys here right there's your guy handing it off two defenders right there and you uh, maybe you can speak a little bit to like your ability to manipulate guys and handoffs here right because you get him flying up the high side of this thing and then just end up yanking it behind your big man there and kind of have your little uh your little space in the corner there just by kind of like very stealthily manipulating him to go that way. Right. What exactly went down here and how did you create this sliver of space? Yeah, I think, I mean, a lot of it's like, you know, it's a chess game out there. I mean, probably he watched film of me. I like to rip off hand handoffs and go straight to the rim hard. Yeah. Right. Um, but you know, I'm just reading the defense constantly. And if he cheats like that, then I know that I, Dylan's a big enough guy and sets good enough screens. I can just stop behind and get a decent look at it. Um, and I was also, I think I hit a shot right before that. I was kind of, you know, in a Let's nice little bit of going. And yeah, but um, yeah, he just, he, he went under. He tried to read the scouter, you know. I guess I wouldn't be the scout, but he right. tried to guess a little bit. Right. I was going to come off it hard. Right. I mean, that's normally what dudes do in a handoff situation there, right? But you just kind of have that anticipation and counter in your bag again right it's all these counters and knowing what the defense is likely to do and making them uncomfortable exactly this one's against Towson this is just you one-on-one -on -one iso at the top again right to left step back uh don't need to really dig as much into that one again it's kind of the same thing but just highlighting how ridiculous you know your ability off the dribble is as a shooter now against Northeastern, this is more so highlighting your off ball movement, right? Like a lot of the stuff that we've been looking at here has been with the ball in your hands, either pick and rolls, ISOs, handoffs, right? But this is more so you navigating screens off ball. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to maybe speak to, I guess, you know, you play a ton of minutes every game and, you know, guys are definitely just like shirt tailing you and like not helping off of you, right? Like, to what extent do you think you've uh, kind of improved your conditioning to get your body and your endurance in a place that you can run off screens like this all day and still be an effective shooter? Yeah, I think definitely I, going into the, like my red shirt year and then going into the, this up or last year, um, I was told by my coaches I was going to be playing a lot of minutes and um, 
we had like a tournament down in uh, the Bahamas and I just, yeah. I was a little winded playing a lot of minutes and, you know, I just made it a, a, a major key for me to kind of just improve my conditioning, like the first three, four months going into the season and just right. making sure I can have my legs late in the game and, and such. And, you know, just demoralize teams, you know, who are chasing me around constantly and still be able to like hit, hit shots and stuff. So it was a big, uh, improvement well not improvement era. i was always in, in decent shape yeah. but i definitely improved it over my retro year right it's just like you know with something like that making even a minor incremental improvement can go a long way and like mm -hmm. especially in the fourth quarter or well in the second half of these games before yeah. the quarter when you get to the next level you know being able to sustain you know being such a threat from deep because an under underrated aspect of being a shooter is that endurance and that core and lower body strength right and i think yeah. you've kind of proven uh, over this season that you're very capable of like being just as impactful late in games after running off screens the whole time as you are at the outset. Mm -hmm. So after we watch, you know, you run off that stagger sort of thing one more time and hit that uh, here, we see the balls in the post and you do a nice little, again, right to left step back, had to mix another one of those in there. Now these, I really wanted to highlight these couple of clips against Villanova, right? Because as a like mid-major guy, a lot of times, you know, when people are scouting you for your potential for the next level, they'll want to know how you fared against some of the toughest teams on your schedule or against high major powerhouses, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to maybe first talk me through like, you know, you're playing against Villanova, like a perennial powerhouse has won some national championships recently, like. Uh, do you feel like you get up even more for those types of games and kind of rise to the occasion or what, what was it like playing, you know, against such a prominent powerhouse like that? Yeah. I think like the, the stereotypical answer would be, you know, you want to play every game like you. Sure. Yeah. You last, but you know, you, you definitely get a little extra juice playing in front of a bigger crowd in, in, yeah. in a big game like that. And just, um, you know, I was, I was excited. I was ready, like you said, to, to prove that I can play at that level and play against those guys and do it against, um, all defense, not just at the major level. So definitely, uh, maybe I had a little extra motivation or, you know, whatever it did, but, uh, yeah, yeah, it was definitely fun. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, you definitely, you know, impressed in, uh, in this matchup, you guys didn't back down at all. It was a tough game and we're going to highlight a couple of clips here that particularly stood out. So you're navigating this pick and roll at the top. And I mean, this is just ridiculously deep, right? Who is this? Is that Sadiq Bay? uh yeah yeah it looks like it, yeah i think so and i mean he makes no, that's later that's later oh okay okay so he, he hard to tell from far out here but he he makes the mistake of kind of like dropping under mm -hmm. and on this pick and roll here and most guys in college basketball aren't pulling that from the whole way back there you know let alone you know in probably your biggest game of the year like this right but you have that confidence even with the big realizing the mistake here and trying to get back out on you, it's too late. Just stick that from deep. And that's, that's a huge shot, right? It's a eight point game with a minute 35 left in the half. You guys yeah. very easily could have like gone into the half down double digits and like been a little bit discouraged there, but you hit that thing and pull it within five, you know, in the last minute of the first half. Uh, is this kind of similar to earlier what you what we talked about with guys going under? You're just ready to punish them as soon as you see that. Yeah, a little bit, and also um, I think Villanova just went on a run there too, and and like you said, you know, I, I felt we needed a shot, and that like you said, he went under, and I I got a good look at it, and I it was like a big shot to to go into that half with a little more confidence and a little more, you know, team camaraderie, get the guys going a little bit. So yeah, definitely, and I think that that sort of like you know, leadership and tangible that you showed throughout the year being like the prominent player on the team, the offensive engine, like there's something to be said for that from, you know, the lessons that you can learn from that being a leader in the locker room and on the mm -hmm. court as you, you know, carry forward to the next level. Definitely. And then this one, I mean, I don't even think there's anything the defense could have done on this. I guess the big man could have hedged out a little bit further off the bat here, but you know, the guard does go over top, does the right thing this time. And I mean, you don't have any space on this one where you just like, again, in the second half, still within striking distance, just feeling like, you know, this is my time to take over. And like, I, I have the green light from anywhere. So let's just make it happen. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, I was definitely feeling it a little bit too. I just hit a shot in the corner that brought us within one, and then they hit a couple shots. But um, yeah, I just I came off, and like I said, you know, sometimes you see room, you got it going, and he was a little hesitant to to put. Like you said, he could have stepped up a little quicker, and just yeah, I didn't think he was didn't like you said. I bet he didn't expect me to shoot it. Yeah, and then um, I think that's that's the name of the game. You just do things that the team don't want you to expect to do. So yeah. And I mean, it's, it's again, just so like you stop right on a dime and pull straight up. And I mean, there's no space there, but you can see that you were feeling it on this one too. You're backpedaling. Like, you know, that thing yeah, that was going in, <laughs> in the air. So that had to feel great, man. I mean, that's just a huge play against one of the best teams in the country. And then we just had to, you know, this, you were going to see, this is the recurring theme. I got to throw in a right to left crossover three yeah. in there, like every couple clips, just, <laughs> you know, just to get that through everyone's head that that's like an unstoppable move for you. And then this one, there's another one. They switch that, I, that idea. You get this guy out in an ISO. I, I, I assume like, you know, when some of these big men switch on to you throughout the year, like what's your sort of outlook there? Is your first thought to like, you know, I'm maybe a little faster than this guy. Let me put some pressure on the rim. Or are you thinking like, you know, I have enough shake and he's not quick enough to kind of stay connected to me that I might be able to, you know, get into a really easy pull up three. How do you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of like both of those things. Like it was when, when you get the right switch, like the name of the game in the NBA too, he's like, you want to get the right switch and match up to, to go make a play. Um, yeah. so it's not always, you know, I get a big man on me, I'm shooting a step back, but uh, most of the time, if I get the right switch, I'm, I'm going to go at him. So. Yeah. And I, I, I think that that puts bigs in a really tough spot when they switch on to you, just the extent with which like your range is limitless and the further away you are from the hoop, the more uncomfortable these guys are. And you're just, you know, putting them in a really tough spot. So I, I'd imagine that, you know, with your skill set, anytime you see a switch like this, you're, you are probably, you know, eyes are lighting up, ready to take exactly. advantage of it. And I think we got one more clip from this same game here. So there's an offensive rebound, a lot of chaos going on. I mean, you, you catch this basically at half court, take one dribble and yank it off of offensive rebound chaos like that. I mean, I don't think there's a lot of guys in college basketball that in this situation – just have the sheer confidence to take the shot. Like again, were you just you just feeling it, or are you just that comfortable in your ability as a shooter that you know that's a good shot for you? Uh, I mean, probably a little bit of both. I mean, I was I was shooting really well this game, and um, you know, I think it's a credit to my teammates and my coaches to like you know, nobody's going to be like upset at me for taking that shot because they know like how well I can shoot those shots. Um, so that gives me even more confidence in myself that okay, this is a, like a good shot that everybody's okay with. And it gives you the confidence to take it and make it. And when, when you make it, you know, everyone's happy. So, yeah. So what's, what would you say is your outlook? Like as you go to the next level as a pro and you know, you, you're kind of a rookie all over again, trying to meld into a new locker room, mm-hmm. like you still have that Uber confidence as a shooter, but you might not immediately, like who knows what the circumstances, but maybe immediately you're not like, the guy with the ultimate green light, how do you go about, I guess, establishing yourself as, you know, earning the trust of your teammates to be able to play your game and pull up from anywhere like that, you know, without, you know, without having like gone through the ringer with these guys and gotten to know them over a couple of years or things like that already. Yeah. I think it, I mean, it will come with time. Um, but also just having the confidence to do it and, you know, not letting yourself like as a shooter, you know, you can always got to think about the next play. You can never right. be born on, Oh, that, that last shot, that last shot. So, you know, just having that confidence and, you know, talking with my coaches and, you know, getting to know what they expect from me and what they want me to do on the floor. Cause I think that's really important to, you know, know your role or know yeah. what you're doing out there. And that will give you the confidence to do, okay, I know exactly what I'm supposed to do out here and I'm just going to do it to the best of my capability. And, you know, my role there was, you know, be the guy, be the scorer. So I knew at all times when I take a shot, it was considered a good shot, you know. So yeah, you know, I had I had lots of confidence. But like you said, just got to be confident in your role. And that comes yeah. with relationships and, and time and stuff. So definitely. And I mean, I think that that confidence, like, you know, maintaining it without being cocky, but having that like uber confidence, it eventually like 
I don't know, the team kind of latches on to that and gets mm-hmm. energy from that. Like you see Ty- Tyler Hero right now in the playoffs for the Heat. Like throughout the season, you know, his role, it grew and grew, I would say. And now in the playoffs, he's in like an even more featured role. But that's a guy who's had that, you know, insane level of confidence since he arrived day one. He like, he yeah. belonged, but, you know, the confidence was warranted and his teammates like appreciated him for that and were you know knew that when he came in that that was his role to like make stuff happen and they kind of feed off that energy right Mm -hmm. yeah so let's move on here uh i think we got one more clip here against oakland where we'll see again just showing off the range here right like that's some you know 29 30 footer again i i mean unlimited range definitely going to be a plus for you know the next level and again that speaks to why you're one of the best shooters in this draft class so with this specific part right here now you know we've hit on all the shooting we've hit on your you know your most prominent strength want to just talk through a couple of quick areas that might make sense to focus on as potential improvement areas that if you can just like tidy these up and brush these up a little bit as you're training and kind of progressing your career could really just go a long way to like making you a more well-rounded player. Okay. So the first one here is, you know, teams know that you're, you know, a sniper coming off pick and rolls and can pull up from anywhere. So sometimes teams would blitz and double team you, right? Yeah. Uh, So one thing we just wanted to touch on is when these situations are happening, just getting a little bit more comfortable and patient and like recognizing them, maybe backing out and avoiding these tough situations. Cause you'll see right here, like you get yourself, in a kind of tough spot and then have to force this pass up gets yeah. picked off. Right. Um, do you have any thoughts maybe just as to, you know, when teams start doubling you and blitzing you when, you know, when you're heating up and they know that you're trying to pull up off the bounce, like what can you do to be a little bit, you know, more careful and comfortable in these situations? I think uh, my pace has to be better. Like at the start, I, I should have used to rub them off the screen a little bit more. And you, like you said, pull it out a little bit and not just, you know, just go sprint off it and, and right. get yourself into into trouble. I think just having the patience to to pull it out and move it and and let it come back to me. Yeah, definitely. And you know, to your credit, um, in digging through your stats, you've really Im- actually improved in this as far as uh, you know your turnover percentage goes. Like your turnovers went down a lot since uh, you know your transfer, right? Like you've done a way better job of taking care of the ball, but this is just like one very specific area that if you can tidy this up, I think it would just go a long way, uh, you know, to rounding out your offensive game. Right. For sure. Um, And I think we'll see maybe one more here just, you know, gets poked away double team again. Right. So just one minor improvement area there. And then the next thing we're going to see is right here is on the defensive end, just navigating ball screens. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that it's entirely possible that a lot of teams at the next level will try to like put you in these situations, run guys off ball screens, try to get switches, whatever. Right. Uh, but just getting a little bit more comfortable with getting in a stance, fighting over screens and, you know, ensuring that you're locking in and engaging on this end when pick and rolls are coming. Right. Okay. So I guess on this one here, do you think that, you know, you were just kind of like, you know, some of the clips that we were focusing on earlier with you on the offensive end where defensive guys were kind of anticipating what you were going to do ahead of time. Do you think that maybe that's what happened here and how you got caught up position on this one? Yeah, I was, I was jumping to the down. We, we yeah. down a lot and I, um, we're taught to like press up when we down and I just yeah. like bagged off and jumped way too off to, and he just had an easy, comfortable pull up. So right. Like, being more confident and, and like pressing up my ability to guard. Yeah. Yeah. And like down or ice or blue or what, you know, whatever you want to call it that a lot of teams still run that at the next level. And so Mm -hmm. exactly what you're saying, just getting a little bit tighter up to him, you can still, you know, force him away from the screen in this situation, but just staying a little bit more attached to ensure that, you know, this kind of thing doesn't happen. Right. Um, Now next on this one, I think we'll see, this time you just go under, right? You, you make sort of, and maybe it's a scouting report thing. Maybe you were comfortable with the shot going up. Uh, is that Pemberton there? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, you know, his numbers maybe weren't as good representative as like the extent with which he is a pretty good shooter, but 
you know, I think you kind of end up making the same mistake that a lot of guys make against you and go like too far under this thing and give them too much space. Right. Definitely. So, you know, the first one is just over anticipating this one was going under against a good shooter. And now we'll see on this one here. Uh, you know, I think again, similarly, like you're kind of trying to like, you know, get your butt to the screen and kind of do your down action there and force them toward the baseline. Right. But just kind of, do you think, what, what do you think here? Like, what are you, how do you assess this particular play? Uh, well, first of all, it's kind of soft of me, but uh, <laughs> I think I got to like, again, press up and like, I kind of just jumped into the screen and just let him use it instead of like, like being up on him and jumping out and just completely forcing him to the down, but he just easily went around me. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like the, the screener, you know, doesn't even actually make contact with you. You're just kind of caught, caught a little bit in no man's land and yeah. like trying to, you know, force him and, you know, toward the baseline there. Right. And just kind of get yourself stuck in this position gets into an easy pull up. Right. And then I think this might be our last one here where, you know, you're in a little bit of a double team action here, get spun around and then, you know, taken into the rim and he gets a little bit too easy of a look here. So in addition to like the pick and roll stuff and navigating that, just, you know, I, I feel like you were pretty engaged at the outset of this and then just kind of lose it a little bit as the play is going along. Uh, yeah. Is this something that you're working on as well now during your pre-draft process, just kind of like shoring up your feet and your strength and everything so that you can uh, kind of lock in and engage more as an on-ball defender. Yeah. It's one thing I've been, I've been definitely working on. I got a, a trainer that's specifically just like athletic athleticism and just working on getting stronger and quicker and faster. So I've been working with him pretty much every day and it's been a big focus for me, but yeah, I definitely need to improve that if I'm going to stick around in the next level. Yeah. And you know, it's not to say that you're like a bad defender or anything. That's just like, you know, one particular thing that stood out was like navigating ball screens and kind of just like locking in as an on ball guy. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, brush that up, brush up the, when the blitzes are coming at you, but you know, like I said before, you're maybe the most dynamic shooter in this draft class. I don't know if that's getting, uh, you know, as much recognition as it should. Like people talk about your Aaron B. Smith's, your Desmond Baines, like, these guys that are bona fide shooters and those guys are great shooters, but I think you're right up there in a similar class with those guys. So uh, congrats on, you know, the great college career and, you know, showing so much growth this season to warrant you uh, entering the draft as an early entrant. I think it's entirely possible. You might be the best Canadian in this, uh, in this draft class. It's uh, you and Isaiah Mike are kind of the, kind of the headliners there yeah, so yeah. representing canada uh do you know isaiah mike at all uh, a little bit we've with team canada and some bio steel like all stuff yeah. i like you know he's a, he's a toronto guy i'm a nova scotian guy so i don't i don't yeah. see him too much but yeah you know, shout yeah, out to yeah. good player yeah yeah he uh you know he entered the draft as a junior as well also is being recognized as one of our uh pbc honorees so you guys will have to have to link up with the pbc canada connection yeah, there for sure uh, so before we wrap things up here, I uh, just kind of wanted to give you the stage here um, to kind of speak directly to teams. So for the teams out there that might be interested in bringing you into their organization, who is Nate Darling and what can they expect from you both on and off the court? I think, first of all, I think I'm a, I'm a great locker room guy, great culture guy, and I think uh, I'm pretty easy going and um, I'd fit in with any any locker room. I think that's a as long as with not looking at basketball, I think that's a huge key. Yeah, um, but you know, on the on the basketball court, I think, like you said, I think I'm the best shooter in the draft, and I think um, in today's game, I think that says something. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm a hard worker, and I'm gonna give it my all, and I'm gonna get. You're gonna, you're gonna get what you get. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's a great attitude to have, and you know, like we were talking about earlier, like maintaining that confidence as a shooter and just bringing that dynamic element to stretch out defenses and provide that much of a threat uh, spacing the floor like that could immediately add value to a pro team. And I think a lot of teams are going to recognize that and, you know, definitely excited for you as you, you know, navigate these next couple months leading up to the draft and we'll be tuning in and paying attention and rooting for you as you uh, eventually start your pro career here. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate you giving me the time to do this. So thank you. Of course, man. Thanks for making the time as well. Stay safe. 
Uh, everybody, this is PBC honoree, Nate Darling. Thank you, Nate. Appreciate it. Thank you.